A returning toilet bowl ring can be a real challenge. This video is not about getting the ring off, which we do. It's about preventing the ring from returning so quickly, and in some cases, severely. If you look online for a solution, you get all kinds of different advice. In this video, we are taking a scientific approach by testing the top three recommended solutions in a side-by-side -side comparison to see which solution truly works best. Through this scientific approach, we did find the answer. Stick around because I think the results just may surprise you. So this is what we're dealing with. This is a bi-weekly customer. So two weeks ago, we got the toilet ring completely gone, but yet it did come back and it came back kind of severely. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna divide this toilet into four quadrants. One quadrant of it, we're going to clean like we normally do with a toilet brush, a powder cleanser, and even a little bit of bleach. Then we're going to take the remaining three quadrants and we're going to clean each one of those using the top three recommended solutions for getting a toilet ring and preventing them from coming back. Here are the top recommended solutions. The first and the most popular is the pumice stone. The second solution is lime away. Of course, this is a spray, and as it claims, it destroys, destroys lime and calcium and rust. We'll find out soon enough. And of course, we are going to use latex gloves. And then the last solution is Barkeeper's Friend. It is a powdered cleanser. It's a little expensive, but it does a great job on porcelain and ceramic, which of course is what a toilet is. And with this, we'll use a blue sponge, which is a little bit more abrasive than the light duty white sponge. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the lava rock here, the, the, the pumice stone, which if you feel it, if you flip it, you can hear it, it almost chimes like a bell. But we're going to use it for the instruction, which is to get it wet. And then I'm gonna have you hear, listen to what it sounds like. So there's no doubt, as we speed this up a little bit, that you can hear that scratching the porcelain. Now, the instructions are if it gets it wet, it's, it's not going to scratch it, but boy, you can sure hear it scratching it. And so that's the concern of using a pumice stone is that you do run the risk of scratching the ceramic, which can lead to even more problems. So you'll see here, we're going to go ahead and get it all clean. And then once we're clean, you're going to take a look and see, it actually it actually wore it out. It, it wore it down, which is, you know, normal. That's how it works. So it literally rubs it off. So that's, again, you know, the, the most recommended solution if you do an internet search on that. So you'll see we cleaned that one quadrant there. So now we're going to use the lime away. And so to kind of keep it as scientific as possible, we're going to protect the other areas from getting, uh, you know, this solution on here. So the first thing you'll notice is that even though we flush the toilet and turn the water off to keep that water down, you can see as soon as we spray it, it's slipping right off. It's not staying on there very long. So we're going to use that blue uh, scratchy, it says not abrasive, but it, you know, you got to be careful with it. But we're going to use that to get it off. We're going to spray some more solution on there because, of course, it's not staying on there. Let it sit for a second. Of course, it's in fast motion, so we let it set for you know a few seconds and then just continue to scrub that. The, the next solution is that Barkeeper's Friend, and we're going to use that same blue uh, sponge and uh, scrub it hard to get it off there. Probably speed it up here just a little bit to kind of get through that. You'll see that I'm really scrubbing hard. We're not, you know, faking this thing, so we're, we're scrubbing it like, you know, this is going to work and get it all off. Right there, just at the water line. And then the last thing we're going to do is like we normally clean a toilet, we're going to use a little comet in the water. And then we're going to spray a little bleach just right there in the corner of that, of that quarter. This is the standard way to clean a toilet. A little bit of powder cleanser, a little bit of bleach if you see mold in there. So just a little bit over there. And then we're going to use our toilet brush to go ahead and scrub it uh, just like we normally do, just in that one area. And then you'll see that we're going to come back around here. And I'm going to just clean the edge of that toilet just a little bit. 
not I'm not hitting the toes, just that's just more the the under the lip part to see. Now look, it's completely clean, isn't it? So we got the toilet ring out, which is really not what the primary task here is. It's about preventing it from coming back. Okay, so it's been two weeks since we cleaned the toilet with the goal is to remove that stubborn toilet bowl ring so the ring would not return as it has been for you know a long time. You, you, we cleaned it, it looks clean, but that ring would come back fairly quickly and kind of harshly in about two weeks. And so we conducted the experiment uh, to see about what performed best to keep that ring from not coming back. So which do you think worked better? Do you think uh, the Comet and the toilet brush, which is kind of what we've been using and didn't satisfy that, ta that, uh, that goal? Or do you think it was the Lime Away and did that uh, do a better job in preventing the ring to come back? Or did the barkeeper's friend with uh, you know a, a nice scrubby sponge and really scrubbing that thing hard to get it away? Or kind of the more radical, but the most commonly prescribed solution, the pumice stone. So which of those do you think uh, prevented the ring to come back? And the answer is none of them worked. Look at this, two weeks later, it came back. I mean, arguably maybe a little bit less, but it's still there. So, so none of them worked. And so my thought was, well, then what, what's gone wrong here? So my, my, my thought was, well, is the toilet bowl etched? Is the ceramic pitted? In other words, has that water line on a 20-year-old toilet, which is what we're dealing with here, that the ceramic has just eaten away? Or is there still buildup that's still left that stuff clings to? So, so that becomes the question in resolving the problem of it coming back. And the only way to solve that problem is we have to really look closely uh, to get down there, really look closely. So we're going to take a real close look at that toilet ring to see what we're dealing with. Okay, so, so what we're gonna, I'm going to do here now is I'm going to get really close to my magnifying glass. And I'm going to see what we're dealing with here. See, see if I can get a good look at it. Well, as I bring this back, it doesn't look like it's pitted. You know, it looks like there's still built up there, which is a surprise because, especially when we use this pumice stone here, you know, I would have thought that would have got that all off. You know, so, so I know it's going to be hard for you to see from this angle, but I'm gonna take some pictures of it and zoom it in to give you guys an idea of what we're dealing with here to see what, what the solution could be. So here are those pictures, and you can see that it appears that it's just stained, and that possibly the solution is, is, to, is to scrub those stains off better to prevent it from coming back at all, or at least not as harshly. Okay, so now that we think that it's a buildup still that remains on there, uh, the next thing is, you know, what are we going to do to get it off of there? I don't think the pumice stone is a good solution just because it's so abrasive. You know, the, you know, even though it seems to be kind of the most popular recommendation, we've proven that it's really not totally a recommendation. And some of the people that advise against the pumice stone, it's because it does scratch it. You could hear in the beginning of the video, you could hear it scratching it, and you're definitely taking some of that porcelain off. So I'm afraid if it didn't get off with that application, which was, you know, fairly lengthy, that we're going to run the risk of taking the porcelain off, which could lead to, you know, you know, probably permanently scarring. And then that would definitely mold and stuff and, and other stuff that's in the toilet would stick to that. We don't want that. So I think the solution is we simply need to scrub it longer, harder, and with something with a little bit more abrasive uh, nest to it. So there's two solutions we're going to use today. We are going to go back to the barkeeper's friend uh, more than comment. We believe that this is probably a better solution. Not only does it polish it, but it's safer on porcelain and ceramic. So we're going to stick with that and we're going to divide this toilet into two sections. We're going to do this side with 
a green sponge. Now, sponges come in uh, multiple grades, like sandpaper. White is light duty, and which should be the only thing you really use in a house. Uh, the blue is, is, uh, is, is non-scratch, but it will scratch. Read the label, read the fine print. It will scratch soft plastic, uh, even glass. So, it, you know, it's usually used for pot, you know, pots and pans still. So look at it, it says not safe on ceramic and glass and plastic. So let, let's not use that. Let's go to this, because this is a toilet that can take a little bit more. So I've got this green sponge right here. And then I've also got this solution, which is used for scrubbing pots and pans. This has got more of a Brillo pad feel to it. It feels different, a little rougher. I would suspect that this would, would get, off, get it off uh, better than the other one. But we're going to continue the experiment by dividing it in half. We're going to use this one on the right-hand side. And this is, I left the label on, scotch Bright Heavy Duty. This is where you put your laundry, uh, your um, dishwashing soap in there. But we're not going to do that. But I am going to take that off there. And you can see that I, 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 I turned off the water and then I flushed the toilet to get the water down away from that water line, but still having some water here that we can work with. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of water back up here, and what's gonna happen is as soon as I start scrubbing here, just like before, that ring's gonna disappear, but but that's not what we're trying to get it off. We're trying to get the microscopic uh, uh, buildup that's still on there, obviously by the pictures and by the definition that's coming back so quickly, and we're gonna scrub it and 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 scrub it until it comes off. So hopefully you don't get too bored. We may even speed this part up a little bit uh, to get through it. So here we go. So I'm gonna use a little bit more powder cleanser than you probably normally would use, but I wanna make sure that if we have enough up there to really tackle this. Uh, you can see that I'm, and you probably can't tell, but I'm really pushing hard. I'm scrubbing this thing with as much strength as I can muster, which is basically what I'm saying here. Uh, and so I'm scrubbing it and scrubbing it really hard. And, you know, you see that paste is staying up there for the most part to keep that uh, that polishing agent that would hopefully get that really small you know, microscopic uh, uh, stains to come off. And that's why we think the uh, uh, barkeeper's friend, which is not just a cleaner, it's also a polisher that would help to get you know, really every little bit of that off. So on this side, we're using that uh, pot scrubber. And then you'll see here on the other side, we're going to use the green sponge, uh, which basically also, you know, green is a kind of a universal color for a certain you know, grade of uh, abrasiveness. And so I don't know if there's going to be much of a difference between the two, uh, but I think certainly with that handle, you can get more leverage on the handle for sure uh, than that sponge, which is basically what I'm saying here. And once again, I'm really scrubbing hard, you know, uh, to get uh, that all off. Even though it looks clean, I continue to keep scrubbing it and scrubbing it. Even though it looks clean, like it did before though, but I'm, you know, scrubbing it and scrubbing it and scrubbing it and scrubbing it to make sure we're getting all of that off, or hopefully we're getting all of it off, which is, again, kind of what I continue to say here. I'm still scrubbing it, yeah. And then we're gonna, of course, we're gonna flush it, get it all out, and guess what? It looks clean, just like it did before. So let's wait, you know, a couple of weeks to see what happens. So it's been two weeks since we last cleaned the toilet ring area with a green sponge and powdered cleanser. Let's see how it looks. It looks a lot better. However, you can still see the ring area. So it didn't really accomplish the goal of you know, preventing the entire ring from coming back, uh, but it sure looks a lot better than it has ever before. So let's take a look once again to see how that ring looks. So here's that toilet ring, and it, and it still looks bad, even though it's better than it was before, it still looks bad. And if I'm a customer paying a professional maid service to clean my toilet, I expect them to solve that problem. So now take a look at this. We haven't cleaned it, it's still dirty, but you can now see it. Look, see those little dots? Those little pinholes? This toilet is pitted. Those are little hollow indentions where it's, it, it's like a cavity in a tooth. It is pitted, 
And that's where everything is being caught and, and, and stays there. And so that's the culprit. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and clean it and see if we can still see the pits that are that are causing this re, this ring from returning so quickly and so harshly. So now we clean the toilet, and from the naked eye, you can see the toilet looks absolutely clean. But let's take a picture of that toilet ring area. Now look, you can still see those pits. Even though it looked clean to the naked eye, look, you can still see where stuff is collecting and still in there. That's what's causing the mold and stuff to grow back so quickly. It's still there. So the conclusion is that a toilet ring that keeps coming back, and certainly ones that are a little more harshly coming back, is probably caused by ceramic pitting found at the water line of older toilets. Pitting can be caused by hard water, urine, and other bodily waste, but the biggest culprit is father time. If your toilet is 10 years or older, you may already have some pitting. The best way to tell is to take a picture at the water line and then zoom in just like I did. So what do you do? The answer is that you scrub the toilet line longer and harder with that powdered cleanser and with a more abrasive sponge. Remember to turn off the water, flush the water to get the water out of the way so you can really work right on that water line, which can vary due through evaporation by as much as an inch. This will help with the toilet ring not coming back as harshly, but it may come back and probably would depending on how much pitting is going on within just a few weeks. If this is your customer, talk to your customer. Show them the pictures of the pitting and how you're treating it. But that the ring will, the ring will probably come back. Now toilet rings, remember, are more common during the hotter times of the year. Mold does not grow fast in cold weather or water. So most toilet ring complaints come during the summertime. And if you want to eliminate the problem, the customer can buy a new toilet or clean the toilet more frequently. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like icon if you did and make sure to subscribe for more cleaning videos.